Hello, so I have a lot of mitre gauges and they're all things that come with tools I own. I've got the Axminster one that came off the bandsaw, the Bosch one that came off the table saw and the Trend one which came off the router table. Now they all work fine and they're all interchangeable because they have standardised slots. But if you want to do anything more precise, I feel you need to upgrade. And I find that's true with every machine I've ever bought. They always come with something pretty standard. So I needed something new and Woodworkers Workshop have sent me a Jessen one to try. When I reviewed the Bosch table saw, I think the mitre gauge was the only negative comment I had. So I was really pleased when I was offered this. So first I get it all unpackaged and it's got a really nice instruction manual. So I can sit down with that and just work out what needs to be done. It's got really clear instructions with nice pictures and there doesn't look like there's that many components to be put together. You start with the flip stop. These two bits slide together, then a couple of washers go on and a couple of Allen headed bolts. It even comes with all the Allen keys to put this together. This nut goes through to go onto the T-track and then this lever goes on the top to help tighten it up. It can then be slid into the T-track fence and you just move it up and down and tighten it up where you want it. Now this gauge comes with a lovely machined aluminium handle and that just gets tightened down with a washer if you can find the hole to put it into. Through the face of the gauge go a couple of these T-nuts and then you flip it round and on the back of those go a couple of really nice thumb screws to tighten them up. Between the thumb screws is this locating pin so you can move the fence and get it back in the same position all the time. It goes into that hole in the fence. So I can get the fence in, the locating pin put in the hole, and then I tighten those thumb screws down to lock it into place. Now that pin's great, so if you move the fence, you can always get it back in the same position, but maybe you don't want it where it is out of the factory. So it comes with this little tool that you use to just put in the hole and then move that locating hole around until you can get it where you want it. I'm gonna set it up on my saw later. The gauge fits nicely into the track, but to take up any play in it, you use the provided Allen key to move these bearings until you can get it running perfectly in there. Now I need to set that locking pin to the correct position. So on the fence, I get this flip stop on three inches, and then I can check how far it is away from the blade. And we're over three inches, so we need to adjust it. So I can loosen the bits off with that tool I showed and the thumb screws and then move the fence until it's at three inches. Then I can get everything tightened back down. So that's now set perfectly for doing 90 degree cross cuts. But if I want to tilt the blade at all, the fence would now hit it. So that's when I can loosen everything off and move it out the way. Now, obviously you could do that on any mitre gauge. But that locating pin means that when I'm finished doing any kind of cut like that, I can move the fence back and it's going to be set up exactly so the rule is correct each time. You can also use an Allen key to adjust the position of the ruler itself, but mine was fine so I moved on to the next step. Now the gauge has these bolts on the side and on the front it's got these couple of grub screws. Now all of those will allow you to adjust it, but mine came perfectly square out of the box. So nothing to do there. To change the angle of the gauge, you loosen the handle, pull out this pin, and then you can move to any angle you want. Now move to the pin to a different position, and it's got detents locking in at all the common angles. The flip stop moves easily on the fence, locks down great and flips out the way when you don't need it. 
This fence offers quite a lot of support for work pieces, but sometimes you want to cut something longer. So if you undo this handle, you've got a nice long extension that goes out to the side, and that has a stop on the end you can move forward using an Allen key. I think this is something I'm going to use all the time. Now it comes with these bolts that allow you to fit a sacrificial fence. Just got a bit of ply to demonstrate. Now with it on, the flip stop won't actually go over the ply. But that's not a problem. Loosen these two bolts and then that bit will move forward and fit perfectly to whatever the material you have. So that is definitely something I'm going to do. So now I've got it all set up, I might as well use it to make something. So I've tilted the blade over to 45 degrees, which means I just need to move the fence over so it's not going to contact the blade. Then I can set up my flip stop and start cutting some components. For my simple test project, I'm just going to make a wall mounted beer bottle opener. So I need three pieces that are just going to mitre together to make a little box to catch the beer bottle caps. I can get these three pieces glued together with some PVA glue and then I'm going to clamp them up using some of these Collins spring clamps. I need a piece of wood that's going to fit in here to be the base and the back and this is slightly too thick so I'm just going to get it clamped up in the vise and then use the low angle jack plane just to take a few shavings off until it fits in there perfectly. I'm happy with the fit, so now I can work out how big the piece needs to be for the base. Then I can go back to the mitre gauge and get that cut on the table saw. So I just have a little test. The little base is going to go in and then the backing piece. Happy with how it all fits, so now I can get some glue on and get it pushed in. To hold it all in place, I'm just going to tap in a few pin nails. I give everything a quick sand down, going up to 120 grit. Now, this is just some very blonde looking pine, and I don't like the look of that, so I'm going to stain it. And what I have is some India ink. On pine, India ink covers well, is cheap, and I like the look. Also, with the hardware I'm going to put on, I think they're going to work well together. So I've got one of these bronzed bottle openers. I can just get that put on, mark out a couple of holes with an awl, and then I'm going to screw it on using some brass screws and screw caps. So that I can hang this on the wall, I'm going to put a brass keyhole mirror plate on the back, and then that's it all done. So a simple little project, and a nice little test of the mitre gauge. And I'm going to get that on my wall and enjoy a beer. So over the years, I've used quite a few different mitre gauges, all the ones that come with tools. I've used a couple of Chinese knockoff ones, which have been okay, but this Jessen one is in a different league. As you saw, it was just perfectly square out the box. And not only is it just a very good, useful tool, it's a beautifully made item that just is a, just a lovely thing. Um, I've used crosscut sleds in the past as well. They're great, but the trouble is, whatever the board thickness of your sled, that's reducing the cut capacity of your saw blade. So I've kind of moved away from crosscut sleds. I prefer a mitre gauge. So as I say, this was sent to me by Woodworkers Workshop. It's made by Jessam. There'll be an affiliate link down below, so if you click on that, that is much appreciated. They also have uh, lots of other tools, and yeah, it's really a beautiful website with lots of nice stuff, so it's worth checking out. Just uh, go and have a browse. So, conclusion, I am super impressed with this. I know I got sent it for free, but I would spend my money on it. It's a lovely thing that would just last the rest of my life, I think. So... Thank you for to Woodworkers Workshop, thank you to my patrons, thank you for watching, and please subscribe for more videos.